everybody to the Mountaineers Now Post Game Show. I'm Skylar Callahan. and joined with me is Christopher Hall, co-publisher on the site, West Virginia, picking up their first one of the PK85 Legacy Tournament, 89-71 to over Portland State. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into some of the stats. West Virginia and Portland State combined for 54 fouls in this game. A lot of whistles, especially in the second half, 43 turnovers. Uh, just a very sloppy game. Individually, uh, Trey Mitchell had 16 points. Nice bounce back game for him, as well as Emmett Matthews, who went for 14 points and four assists. Kedrian Johnson also dishing in 12 points. And Seth Wilson, how about the night that he had shooting the ball from the three-point land, uh, going for four threes in the game, uh, shoot, finishing the day four of five from behind the arc. And then for Portland State, only one or only two guys in, in double figures, and that is Parker with 19 and Woods with 12. So I pretty much summed everything up right then and there, Chris. I mean, it was ugly, a lot of turnovers, a lot of whistles. Um, how how else would you even characterize this one? Boring. <laughs> to me, <laughs> not because it's 11 o'clock at night. No, uh, very long, uh, drawn out game. Um, Credit to Portland State. That's that's by design. Uh, they push the ball. They push the tempo. Uh, you like to see West Virginia stop that. Uh, just get in front of the guy. Uh, stop the ball. Uh, you're going to probably hear that a lot over the coming week uh, from Huggins. Uh, they're just not stopping the ball in transition. They're just riding their guy uh, down the floor. It's, it's going to have to stop. Uh, last night, they were essentially running around uh, the yeah. Purdue offense with no effect. They overplayed everything. Uh, and gave up driving. So they, the energy and effort is obviously there. Uh, don't want to turn it down to stay in front of your guy. Uh, that's, been, that's probably their biggest mistake right now is overplaying uh, and giving free lane, uh, giving a free drive uh, right down the lane for easy buckets. Something to definitely have to work on. Um, we we'll kind of figure it out. Uh, again, this was just a boring game. I mean, you kind of expected this is what it's going to be, but it's very boring, very drawn out. Hopefully, uh, a little bit better, less whistles on Sunday. Now, I got to ask you because I mean we're five games in or no, six games into this thing now. Are some of these issues, whether it's defensively, stay in front of your guy, the communication, or all these turnovers that have you know been happening at an alarming rate, are these issues you think can get fixed, or is this just kind of the team and what Bob Huggins has this year? It's way too early. These guys are still still trying to play with one another, figure where they're at. Turnovers really haven't been too bad. Uh, tonight they were, again, just from Portland, Portland State speeding everybody up. Uh, but you want it's I think more concern is the unforced turnovers and some of the lazy passes. Yeah. Um, you know, even though you're at 14-16, you do that in the Big 12, uh, all of a sudden you can be down uh, within minutes if you're turning over turning it over at the rate they did at time. Portland did it. Um, I think West Virginia turned it over three times in three minutes. Uh, Portland went on a 10 out run. West Virginia was up 20. All of a sudden, it was 10. So you have to fix those. It's not anything that can't be fixed. This isn't a team that's not taking in coaching. Um, it's just a matter of these guys still learning how to play together. I think communication defensively continues to improve. I think just most of it is just overplaying their guy. Uh, they're usually faster. They were a lot faster than Purdue yesterday. You're just overplaying. So just calm down, stay in front, um, because the whistles aren't going away. It's going to happen. Especially in the club. <laughs> just keep your guy shoot over you. Make it a tough shot uh, and don't give them easy free throws. Because, again, we saw it yesterday with Purdue. Um, you can question some of those calls early, but when you put them to the line, you know, when you reach and you get to that bonus early, when they put them to the line, they made them. So teams in Big Club are going to do that as well. So you may or may not have the answer to this, but where do you think Jose Perez fits into this this team in the backcourt whenever he is eligible to play? Right now, he's not able to play. They send in the waiver. But, I mean, do, do you feel like he can be a guy that, that really gets significant minutes? Is he going to have to work his way in? I mean, how do you see them using him? He'll definitely have to earn the trust. I think, that obviously, there's already a lot of trust there because they went and nabbed him immediately, and there's not even any scholarships, so they're making sure. Um, that everything's taken care of for him, but he would probably would have seen him more in a night like tonight uh, to settle the offense down. He's a two-point guard. 
So you're you're going to get a more silly box control. And I saw the knock on Key or Joe Toussaint. Joe's been really great off the bench, but you have a guy that probably you know sees the angle. Joe does a really good job passing. Uh, with Perez, you, you see better angles uh, driving for the basket. Whether he has that same success in the Big 12 is yet to be determined, but I think you'll have a little bit more patience uh, with Perez and a little bit more somebody that can attack the basket a little bit more efficiently. But I wouldn't expect him to just jump right in and be able to do that. Um, it's obviously you're making a leap uh, from where he was at. Uh, well, St. Peter's, is that where it was? Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, so it's obviously a bigger leap. He's played he's played against big power five opponents, but it's gonna take him a while to catch up to the speed of everything. It'll be interesting. I wouldn't I would imagine Hunger probably just gonna throw him in there and see kinda of how it works. Uh, it's not the only way you can do it really. It's just throw him in there and see what happens. So I, I think you're getting more of a veteran point guard out of him than uh what they already have. That's pretty much the reason why they went and grabbed him. Yeah, unfortunately for, for Bob Huggins, he's not someone that they have to throw in there and he's got to play 25 minutes right out of the gate. I mean, they've got a ton of guards that they've been working into the lineup. I mean, there's some guys you kind of forget about, like Seth Wilson on a night like tonight. You know, he, he reminds you that he still exists. He goes out there and hits four threes. Kobe Johnson can do some things as well. And then you add in another guy like Jose Perez. I mean, that, that becomes a, a good problem to have. Lastly, before we wrap up, Chris, West Virginia taking on Florida on Sunday. We don't know the time. Uh, we, we thought we knew the time yesterday, but the, bra the bracket proved us wrong. Um, but anyways, West Virginia, Florida, is this a must-win game for West Virginia? I mean, I know it's it sounds like a silly question, but, I mean, you, you almost have to come away with the win in this one, right? I mean, ideally, yes. I don't think it's a must-win. It's just too early. You, you have the Big 12, which we know is going to be a battle. It uh, might be a struggle uh, to get win. So, in a sense, yes, but – there's too many opportunities uh, down the road for this really to be a resume killer or builder. Uh, Florida's not as good as they have been in the past, uh, but historically, West Virginia struggles at SEC. I don't even know the last time they beat Florida. Um, I don't this think they played them a lot, but um, they struggled against Florida uh, in this coaching staff, so it would be a good win. Uh, because you know Florida's going to be well prepared. And it is a good team despite their record. Um, they're going to be tough, physical. So it's going to be a good test, uh, definitely, uh, for West Virginia. But I don't think it's a must win because Florida's going to, they're going to be a solid team uh, throughout the season. Yeah. And you mentioned some of those big games coming up, not only Big 12, but right after this, they got to play in the Big East Big 12 battle against Xavier. They got UAB, Navy. So there's still some pretty tough non -comp or non conference competition still coming up for the Mountaineers to maybe grab some signature wins or maybe not signature wins, but some quality wins on the resume. So that's going to do it. West Virginia 89 71 over Portland State. They take on Florida on Sunday. And that'll do it for us today. We'll be back tomorrow to wrap up the recap of West Virginia Oklahoma State football. Eugene Napoleon will be on with me for that. So be sure to click that subscribe button on YouTube at Mountaineers Now. And follow us on Twitter at Mountain Years Now. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching.